Hello, my name is Jörg Drescher. I will talk to Carl Weidequist, who holds a PhD in political theory and another one in economics. He teaches in Qatar as visiting associate professor at Georgetown University School of Foreign Service. Furthermore, he is co-chair of the Basic Income Earth Network and a member of the Coordinating Committee of the US Big Network. One of his topics is basic income and he is very interested in the Alaska Permanent Fund. I'm going to ask him some questions about these issues. Mr. Weidequist, recently you finished a book together with Michael Howard on the Alaska Permanent Fund. Do you think the scheme of the Alaska Permanent Fund could be suitable for other countries too, even those which do not have mineral resources? Yes, I do. That is, in fact, one of the major themes of the book, is that you don't have to be resource rich to have a resource dividend. The Alaska, the Alaska Permanent Fund dividend is like a basic income. It's Alaska's, it's Alaska's version of it. What they do is they tax their oil, and uh, as they export it, they tax it, and the state gets almost all of its revenue from oil, and it puts a tiny amount of that into a fund. And the fund is invested in stocks and bonds and real estate and all kinds of investments all over the world. And out of the returns from that fund, every year, every citizen resident of Alaska gets a dividend. It's usually in the neighborhood of one to $2,000 a year. Um, now, so that's what the fund is, and that's how it works in Alaska. And they found it easy to do that because they were creating the oil industry and they did it when they started. That made it easy to do politically, but it's actually very easy to do elsewhere, and there are a lot of reasons for it. One, it may not be as easy politically elsewhere, but it's definitely easy economically. Uh, one of the main reasons that you don't have to be resource rich to have a resource dividend is all countries are resource rich. All countries have very valuable resources, even the poorest country when you take them into when you take what's actually a, a shared natural resource or common good into account uh, the uh, the atmosphere is a shared resource people should be paying for any pollution they put in the atmosphere that will both discourage pollution and create a lot of revenue a, a great solution to global warming and other pollution problems we're having is make people pay to pollute make them pay a lot put that money into a fund like the Alaska fund and it'll create a permanent dividend for everybody. But you can also do it with land value. You can do it with uh, uh, with uh, groundwater that a lot of companies are taking groundwater for free and from out of out of our ground and bottling it and selling it back to us. Um, also, things like money creation, the broadcast spectrum. Most governments give away the broadcast spectrum spectrum to corporations who then sell it back to us um, by advertising or, or selling us cell phones or something like that. They get this resource for free, and they sell us not only the service of providing the cell phone or providing the television or providing the radio, but also they sell us the value of having a limited amount of the broadcast spectrum, which other people don't have. And because that's limited, it creates a big rent, which we could be selling to them instead of just giving it to them free. Um, so every country and every state can do that. And one of the authors of the book uh, does, in the second of the two volumes, one of the authors does a really great empirical study where he looks at how much could a resource poor state of Vermont uh, take in resource revenue that it could have an Alaska style dividend? And he does various estimates. It's it's hard to make an estimate of all these things that you could be taxing that you're not, because some of them, well, how much would people pay for groundwater that they're taking out and bottling if they had to? And it's uncertain to know exactly how much it would it would fund. But his low estimates. Um, are in the neighborhood of $2,000 a year, and his high estimates are over $10,000 a year that little, little Vermont, not known for its resource exports or anything, Vermont could have a dividend of over $10,000 a year for every man, woman, and child.